Okay. Well, hi everybody. We're here at Fudo headquarters. Hi, Iran. How are you doing? Hi there, Pavel. I'm doing good. How are you? No, I'm good. I'm good. Never been better. Okay. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about how to free your mind and free your TV, right? Great. So, you know, just as a summary, what would you say is like wrong with smart TVs these days? Because they're kind of cool, right? You watch Netflix on it, you just log into your Hulu, you log into your Amazon and you watch all the movies. What's wrong with that? Right. Well, you're basically, they're, they're, the TV manufacturer is subsidizing the cost of their TV by collecting the data of what you watch and selling it. Um, I think the, the uh, CEO of Vizio was very clear about this several years ago. That's the most obvious problem. But you know, worse than that is we can't allow you know, the, the proliferation of this control over what you watch. Like every app on your smart TV is controlled by the manufacturer, whether it's allowed there or not. You know, the, the things that are recommended for you to watch are controlled by their algorithms. We need to, you know, so it, it really fits in. It's really the, the antithesis of, of Futo's mission to put people in charge of all the computers in their life. The computer inside your TV, which is just as powerful as the computer in your phone or, um, you know, even the computer in your desktop, but it's different because you have even less control over it than you do over, um, over, over your other computers. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the tracking that the, um, the TV, and this is not necessarily Netflix or Google doing this, this is the TV manufacturer themselves or the Roku smart TV. They're taking screenshots of what you're watching on the TV, analyzing it and selling it to advertisers and God knows who else. Um, so today we're going to discuss a system that basically allows people to bypass all that, right? It's basically your own smart TV, right? Right. And it's great because you can use it with any smart TV, but just never plug your TV into the internet. You can get your own computer and plug it into the HDMI port on your TV, and then it's your computer. And we and so we did that. So yeah. it's we're running. Well, we're all everything we're going to be showing today is running off this little Raspberry Pi, which is like a little used to be forty fifty dollar little computer. Um, and it's running a software, a smart TV software called Kodi, right? right? And so we're going to review Cody, give us, get, give you uh, our, as, you know, assessment and review of Cody. It's, it's pretty cool as many strengths, but there's, you know, uh, uh, weaknesses here and there. It's an open source software first and foremost, right? So what does that mean? Um, you know, as compared to the proprietary systems on most smart TVs, what, what, who made Cody? What is it? I mean, more than with open source, more than anything, you have control over your computer. You, you might not be able to program, but somebody else would program. If your nephew can program, they can actually see everything that is happening. There's people scrutinizing these these uh, software packages. And you, you can know, see all the, the time. code. If you, can see you the code. want to go look at the source code for the Kodi and go line by line, you can totally do that. If you want to compile it yourself, compile meaning you know convert it into machine readable language and then run it, you can do that, right? Yeah, right. You can see exactly what it does and what it doesn't do. Right. Okay, so I think it's important to note that you know open source is great, but again, nothing's perfect. There are add-ons on Kodi, and very likely there are some add-ons that could actually do the same bad things that smart TVs yeah. do. Yep. And the but at least you're in control, and if you kind of stick with the basics with Kodi, you'll probably be okay. So um, the the. The interface for Kodi is very familiar to anyone who's ever used any kind of smart TV. It's basically the same, right? You got your movies on the left, TV shows, uh, music, TV. You can, and the really cool thing is you can install different add-ons. In other words, apps, right? Kodi has its own app store. Uh, uh, you can, I personally like Soma FM. Uh, you can run, you know, you can play all the channels of uh, Soma FM, but there are many other libraries because what we're trying to go for here is go outside of Netflix. We're trying to go outside of YouTube. We're trying to go truly sovereign, not just sovereign computing on your own, uh, on your own device, on your own TV, but also services that respect people's sovereignty and privacy. So, um, Iran, why don't you tell us a little bit about the library uh, plugin or the library service? Yeah. So this fits in really well with you know the the other problems we're looking at with 
a company like YouTube having way too much power about what you watch and censoring people. So library is actually a completely separate um, index of user created videos. Um, it's maintained on a blockchain. And you know, library is the kind of thing that they would have a tough time getting onto an LG TV. But with Kodi, you can install the library add-on and now you aren't in control. Um, so it's like YouTube, right? right? It's like YouTube, but it's not, thankfully. Uh, so, you know, here's some Need for Speed video or whatever. And you can just, uh, it's, it's basically a YouTube that doesn't spy on you, which is what I really like. Okay, so we go to our It's cars. a YouTube that doesn't spy on you, and it's a YouTube where the recommendation algorithm isn't messing with your head, which is, uh, I think, a big, an even bigger problem now with YouTube. The recommendation algorithm, they are playing with, playing with it in a way to uh, manipulate Behavior modification, exactly. behavior modification algorithms. Yeah. So, right. I mean, if you're absolutely addicted to the crack of YouTube, that's fine. You can you can watch YouTube. There's YouTube. There's, um, but then um, uh, a lot of people have that Plex TV uh, where they watch the TV shows. You can actually. There's a Plex app. You can log into your Plex account and watch your TV, no problem. Um, and then, of course, uh, we get to the interesting yet controversial uh, part of Kodi, of course, which is Elementum plugin, which is a plugin for downloading online content. Now, um, I just want to make clear that uh, we do not, of course, support any uh, pirating of any content. The only content we're showing is legal or free content with expired copyright so please you know do not abuse these tools um but elementum basically is a plugin for torrent BitTorrent, and so we can watch we've looked for nofseratu which is a 1922 movie that's already out of copyright so uh we we can, we can have a look at it um and you can see that you just merely type it in uh, and it starts streaming right from from BitTorrent from all around the world and this is pretty cool now clearly this is only for free or content for free content or content that's already out of copyright um but uh, depending on the speed of your internet connection we'll just buffer a little bit and then just start playing and download the rest so uh oh, here we go here's Nofseratu 1922 out of copyright movie so the Kodi TV is it's a versatile computer system that's under your control that allows you, you can sync your family photos, right? Because it has a sync thing uh, app and you can just have your phone directly sync with this little machine and yeah. totally bypass you, Google uh, Photos and I, right. and if iPhotos. You, you know, if you buy MP3s off of Amazon, you Legally. can put your MP3 files on here and listen. Yes. Right. Um, I, I would say look at your jurisdiction. Don't don't break the law. Make sure you don't get in trouble. That's right. Yeah. And so uh, what I personally really like is um, is the fact that it's it's really a programmable computer, right? And there's no notice. There was no login. We we didn't log in. We didn't use username password to log into anything, because the system's ours. No one's tracking it. No one's tracking our TV. If we disconnect it no one's going to know what you have on it you can install games you can you can view your pictures you can do all kinds of things right uh you can have a weather whatever it's 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 basically a nice um nice front end for your own smart tv now these are all the good things right but as with anything there's uh it's a it's a volunteer driven project right it's non-profit it no one, get, I think, I don't think anyone gets paid to build Cody. Right. And so there's, uh, it's still, a, it's got kinks. There's, it's unstable. Sometimes it will crash. But hey, you know, no big deal. Yeah. We'll just restart and you And you know, I mean, and to, to their, in their defense, something like YouTube might not work as well as it does on a smart TV. But that's because Google hates you if you're doing this. Because Google's Why? losing all their control. They, yeah. didn't, they do not want you off of YouTube. They want to be able to control what you see on YouTube. That's right, because some of the plugins that you can install for this will view YouTube for you, will strip out the ads, right? Now, Google will definitely hate that, right? Because you're yeah. taking revenue from them. Right. Um, but it, it's perfectly legal to run an ad blocker. There's yep. nothing wrong with that. Um, 
And I would say it's it's uh, completely ethical too. Yes. So I, I would say that the Cody system at this point has our you know approval and encouragement. Yes. Um, I, we encourage people to try it out. It's pretty easy. You just put it on a little uh, micro SD card and flash it onto a little Raspberry Pi, and boom, you have a full multimedia interface. Um, and uh, we look forward to your comments. Yeah, and we'll put in the description where you can go to get this. This is a project that's done by a lot of volunteers and we'll link to their sites. All right, so thank you very much for your attention today and uh, stay tuned to more Futo guides to your digital sovereignty.